Hi. Hello. <laughs> and so we begin. Wow. It's been taking me forever to just press that button and begin. <laughs> uh, hi. My name is Michelle. Uh, Michelle Esther Kaiser. I'm originally from Israel. And I hope this is the first video among many. This is my first in English. My God, this is quite bizarre for me. I did not expect this to happen. Uh, but I'm very intuitive and impulsive. And I work with I t tuning in. Um, so this was supposed to happen. <laughs> I hope this actually what let's see where this is gonna go okay so I am actually uh, from back home my business is called back to source I know that in America apparently it's very common I did not know about that till recently when I came to the States I am I'm now located in Hawaii and wow that's so amazing that everywhere is back to source back to source back to source uh, back home uh, I started this three years ago and just for the last year I start to hear other people and places saying back to source back not not referring necessarily to me just in general which is awesome because that was that's the whole point of us echoing and vibrating and uh, having the reality reflecting us our eternal reality uh, I mostly I mostly do new age uh, stuff talking uh, bringing spirituality down to earth uh, there is beautiful, beautiful, so much content in English. Uh, so I'm, I don't know how necessary I am in English. I guess whoever will follow and uh, go with me and continue, be a companion in this journey, uh, will be whoever connects with the energy. So I am what you call, I'll give a short brief of myself. And uh, through every, every video that goes by, it will be sp specific content. Just the first one would be a, a short intro of a, hi, <laughs> who am I? Who am I? I know who I am. I always knew who I am. Uh, I am what you call, what I call an awake soul, which means uh, that I was always awake. I haven't had an awakening. I didn't wake up. I was always very much awake since a very small infant age. Uh, and thank God and my personality, <laughs> thank God for my personality, uh, that I never allowed anything in any system to press me, not even my parents. Never ever, never since then, and uh, never till today. I was always very much in tuned and in sync and in high listening uh, to myself more than to others. Uh, mostly connected with trees and animals and God. Uh, I always had strong strong dreaming. I always knew when I'm dreaming things from the past. I always knew when I'm dreaming things from the future. And I remember some, not all. Um, I grew up and uh, I think they call it the, not the thing before high school school. Uh, I'm just now talking fluently English again uh, lately. So sometimes I'll get stuck on some words. Okay. Uh, so I was in a, what we call a religious school. My parents put me there. 
and don't get me wrong I don't think the the Jews God is the the God I think it's a much more expanded thing and here so in this religious school when I was like eight uh, eighth fourth grade um, I had this talk with God <laughs> Uh, and I was like, well, I don't really connect or relate with uh, how they represent you to me in school. I have no doubt in my heart. I know, I acknowledge there is definitely a bigger source, of a higher field, uh, energy that's going on that I don't necessarily feel I know I believe I'm with you on that I just don't necessarily accept and agree with how you are presented to me uh, so I'm what you call an indigo child obviously <laughs> and it's so fun to talk in English because in English you guys are very much expanded your, your mind is expanded there's a lot of uh, knowledge and open-minded and high talking unlike in Israel where you would expect the Jews to be connected not so much that's a different video because <laughs> ironically it's, it's America it's English what's up with all the world speaking English what's up with that it's uh, it's very interesting because uh, America has a big contrast for me, just beautiful. Uh, so I was always quite weird, always quite awkward, always, mm, I always had a strong energy, so I was always part of, but always on the side. I always took myself to the side, uh, definitely teased on here and there. Uh, never budged me. If I felt I came, when I felt I lived, I'm very glad that this all of this new age thing is happening because now I have things and people that I could talk with <laughs> unlike most of my life it's not for granted I'm 34 now all of you 20s and in your teens you're having a beautiful beautiful life experience quite open I could talk that could discuss things in an open way unlike in my in my days <laughs> uh, so I'm very glad for this and the truth of the matter I always thought I was just uh, I was just stubborn I know I was I know I was smart but I mostly believed I was stubborn and this year I actually discovered I'm a genius uh, I say that to tap myself on the back just to emphasize that I'm, to me, that no, you're not weird, Mish. You're a genius. Uh, I have a very, very, very high IQ, which is 150. The average is 100. Einstein had 130. I discovered this only this year, and I was like, Ma, why didn't you ever tell me this? <laughs> Parents, love you, Ma. No, she's like my mom. Um, but uh, I guess, never mind. Um, so I have a very personal way of examining things and a very down to earth. I like to simplify things. I like to see things as they are and I don't add glitter to them. Um, so as an indigo, I always uh, felt this urge to participate, to take part. I felt always uh, a conscious, conscious, conscious soldier of uh, taking part in uh, bringing the world to a more harmonized place, let's call it. I'm not gonna say better place because better versus not good. We're not the judge of that, just a more harmonized place. Uh, I say in Hebrew, lehair velehair which rhymes, and in English it doesn't rhyme. It means to uh, to wake up people 
and to enlighten people. They have you to wake up and they have you to bright, brighten up the way. Um, and I knew that from a very young age. And I think that in the second grade, six, seven, just came out to TV. Yes, when I was six, seven. <laughs> Uh, and this guy was on TV and I was like, wow, you're over there somewhere when you're influencing so many people right now. That's amazing. Good. That's what I want to be. And so my original path was through, through acting, which was naturally, of course, the theater attracted me much more. And my entire life, you could say, I was absorbing and drinking and shushing up and tuning in and feeling other people and experiencing. I grew up in an okay, nice neighborhood. I went to the hardcore neighborhoods. I wanted the hardcore people. I wanted to observe real life. Uh, I actually left the, my parents' house when I was 15 and a half. Had a job, went to the place, had all the friends. Had a very interesting periods in my life, which you, I could divide them actually uh, four years from 15 till 19 that was uh, living alone experiencing trans psychedelics then leaving all trans psychedelics house clubbing very popular uh, in the city I'm originally a city girl and then the nature and then in the nature between the trees I'm like oh god I'm home I should stay here and it's like uh, no you're, you're in the city, you're supposed to be in the city, you're meant to be from there. You come back later if you like, come and go. Nature's always waiting for you. Uh. <laughs> and then, then there was military two years, then there was traveling the world for another four years, then there was back in the city four years, and then when I became to be the actor that I was waiting to. I'm sorry if I'm a bit uh, over the place. Feel free to ask anything, if anyone is out there to ask. <laughs> uh, I believe I will get more specific and accurate as we go. I just had to get this out there because I intended on doing this already. And uh, yalla, it's like, let's go. So I got, I got to the point where I was intending to my entire life, the peak of my career. Uh, with the theater, I found myself in an accurate theater. Of course, that the first project we had was about violence and hardcore shit, which I love because I, I, wanna, I wanna be a reflect. I believe that art is a way of reflecting society. That was my way of waking up and uh, enlightening, just reflecting black mirror. Or a mirror, and you know, it's just black because there's a lot of shit going on. And it was actually called Midrash Lilith. I don't know how you say it in, in English, uh, but it's like it has to do with Lilith. It was a huge production. It was uh, me and a few other dancers. I arranged this, I produced the evening, I bought all kinds of artists, I did it in a feminine. Uh, empowerment mark uh, I got a scholarship I got a I was really on the right path everything was far everything is <sighs> speaking of uh, awake when I was like in my teens also I noticed that things are coming very easy to me and I want something and it comes and then I was like uh, don't bring me universe don't bring me things so easy because I want to learn. I want to get down to, I want to understand things. I don't want things to just come to me. I want to really understand them. I remembered this a couple of years ago. And then I looked up and I was like, ah, <laughs> okay, we could stop this now. Bring, bring, bring back the things that are coming back easily, please. Uh. <laughs> so I was really at the accurate point uh, everything was fine in life with art, finance, everything was fine. This huge evening got produced 
and I suddenly realized that no matter how much I try to deal with hardcore shit and I go and I sit with the abused women like this or like that with prostitutes with, and this lady this artist she did something about the river of death and she did something about grief and she I bought one I bought one uh, luscious dancer because we're all so skinny and I didn't want all of us to be skinny I wanted it's very important for me to, to bring a and then we, I go down to so small details, so we can't all be skinny. I have to have one big luscious one. So girls won't get the idea that you have to be skinny to be a dancer. Uh, and anyway, coming down to it, I got in a deep depression after this show because I felt that no matter how much I would like it to, to bring a, a, cert, a certain amount of awakening, it's still gonna be entertainment, no matter how much I try. Uh, and I got really depressed from that. And then I was driving to my sister somewhere and it was waning, it was heavy waning. And I started crying. It's not only God, I have all of these like little angels. But, but I have a lot of conversations among myself and beings that I believe that guide me and I was like driving and it's raining and I like take me home I don't want to be here I failed I thought I could do this we thought we could do this this world is doomed it's over nothing could be done fuck this please just take me home take me home take me home I don't want to be you anymore and the next moment I just flipped with my car a double flip in a tunnel and if anyone would have seen this car accident flipping it was one of it was just hilarious because I was so I don't know how you say it in English but I was so like I started to feel the car flipping and I just put my hand and my foot and it's flipping and I like oh another moment in life just going by okay just let me know when it's done and next and the car's flipping into the tunnel yeah, I had a few uh, almost near-death life experiences. I always left without a scratch. <laughs> so the car stopped flipping and I was backwards. <laughs> and I went out. I started taking my feathers. My son went in and out, went in and out. And the first thing that came to my mind was it shut up and get to work and I was like what what was he doing till now I was what but I did I shut up uh, I have high respect for my inner conversations and uh, I shut up and it said you have many gifts you have nothing to complain about shut up and the next moment I was you know the cause on smoke and I just see Arabs and Jews and policemen and everyone are together and I thought like, oh, this is such a beautiful moment <laughs> so anyway so this is how my back to source my business who me who I am all started it didn't start just yet so for me my life guide light is to bring uh, unity to bring harmony is to bring a uh, unity uh, among people uh, when you're such a sensitive human being and intuitive and I literally see people inside and out I could sit on a bench on a bus I could sit whenever wherever whatever and suddenly a person will come to me sit by me and just tell me his life story um, what I want what I deeply 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 what I'm aiming for is for people for humanity uh, not just to wake up oh wake up oh, we're divine sources no it's not about that you're divine sources we're divine so sources awesome it's about unity it's about being capable of looking each other in the eye 
It's about keep it, being capable of sitting one by another. It's by being capable of being cautious and conscious of the words we speak and the energy we put. And we should want to thrive together. It's not me getting strong and compared to you, no. It's you get strong and drive me to get strong and together we'll drive each other and we'll, and we'll drive and thrive together and evolve. And when shit's gonna come down, it's gonna come down. It's gonna be another, another video. Uh, but to have faith and to have, to have faith in the heart, to have a, and not to have fear in the heart. Doesn't have to be a happy heart, okay? Maybe you're a heavy soul, but to have a trusting heart, not a fearful heart, not a hateful heart, not an angry heart, to have a trustful heart, a believing heart. Okay, so the car flipped. I put everything on the side, everything. I, I had an awesome apartment, I gave it away. Three quarters of my sh awesome, incredible shit. I gave everything away. I gave everything away. I left everything. I left the city. I really love traveling, but it wasn't. A, it didn't feel like I'm supposed to go travel the world again. It was, felt like a, okay. So let's go travel the country. Let's go travel a bit of Israel. Yeah, this homeland, this intense, crazy country that I'm so connected to yet it's such a loony place it's so intense ah uh, okay so i left everything on the side but that doesn't mean i'm on a holiday now i got to me uh i was still gonna keep uh, a daily schedule and you know work and improve uh, myself so got to me this uh, chakra book i knew about chakras uh i explore uh, East, West, philosophy, Greek mythology, Hindu. I explored a lot, a lot, a lot in my younger ages. Uh, I think I was smarter back then than I am now. And I think everyone, I, I referred before to the IQ. Everyone, I don't believe it's something that we have and that's it. The brain could totally evolve and expand and get more cognitive electricity going on. Anyone could do it. Uh, yeah. Where was I? <laughs> so I had this chakra book. Okay, every morning I had a schedule. I had my tea. I had my, uh, my yoga, my stretches. And then I would studied this chakra book. Why did I get to this story now? This is supposed to be me explaining how I got to back to source. But I want this video not to be so long, so you could hang in. Okay, I'm, I'm bringing it to a finish. <laughs> I'll tell the story of how back to source became in another video if you like. Till then, I would just like to stick to content. And this is a short intro. And this, I will see it's already 20 and something minutes. Um... So my, in my evolving, putting all autistic stuff on the side, I found myself uh, working as a healer, okay? I'm very much connected. The, actually, my only diploma is a rebirthing constructor. Uh, and only that I did, so I'd have one diploma. I don't have no diplomas, don't have no degrees, don't have nothing, don't connect to that shit. I'm very autodidactic. Uh, and I like learning things on my own. And in workshops that I give and I teach back home, every time when I would speak of something, I would say whatever I say. It's for my own. It's for my own experience. Take what I say and make it your own. Continue exploring it, exploring it from your own angle. We're not supposed to see everything and understand everything the same way. It's not the point. No, God forbid it. God wants to to uh, explore himself through all kinds of beings. We're not supposed to be the same. Uh, but from a healer, as a very 
sensitive, intuitive, empathic. I hold this word going on, empathic. Now, empathic, everyone's empathic. Beautiful, beautiful. Wake up to, we should wake up to that. We're all empathic and potential. Some are more, some are less. Specifically, my, my name in Hebrew also means water. So water, as we know, is a full-on uh, absorbing thing. And as an absorbing, how is my Jewish New Yorkie accent go working for you? ladies, guys. Um, so from uh, doing healing work, I do of course energy work. No one would teach me how to do energy work. I don't mind teaching, but no one would tell me how to feel. I feel, I feel strong. I feel too much. I wish I would feel less. So from a healer, because, uh, because I'm that sensitive and I'm not here to work only one-on-one, -on -one, I found myself evolving into coaching and mentoring which actually became because before every healing session we would have an hour conversation of what's going on in the person's life and I would give them all kinds of uh, drills targilim, I don't know what I'm saying, all kinds of exercises to do that I <laughs> intuitively from within the meeting came up with and I also know a bit my mom is a psych psychologist and I I read, I read a lot of books and peoples and learn from a lot of people. I mostly learned from a lot of people in my life that are smarter than me and I thank them deeply for being there at the white right moment, at the white right time, at the white right story. Uh, and anyway, from here to there, I want to bring this to a laugh. <laughs> I want to try to do at least two a week. And again, I apologize. I shouldn't apologize. I'm practicing not apologizing, but yeah, ADHD. I jump, I jump. Try to keep up. Yeah, I'm too fast. I'm too fast. Uh, I'm slowing. Uh, I'm learning how to slow down now. Also, so I'm in Hawaii, and I found myself. I love moving in life through impulsive, spontaneous, intuitive movement. And speaking of back to source, and that it's so common here in the States, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to say back to source, just so they shouldn't think that I'm uh, copying anyone, because I'm not. Back in Israel, no one speaks back to source, and I've been doing this for like three years and something, and just for the last year, it's been coming. So I don't know how long back to source talk, what's going on here, but anywho, uh, the last year I was really starting to establish things with this business, my business, that also has uh, personal sessions and also I do group sessions. I also started doing uh, con constructing lectures, but it was never, it wasn't economically based and I, I feel like things are, things are supposed to move, move smoothly. When things are accurate, they move smooth, smooth, smooth. Uh, so, back to source, there was this woman called uh, Abraham Esther something. She's incredible. Apparently, she's very popular, and I've heard some of her things. She's amazing, and I got. So, she has a part in me arriving in Hawaii and all of this English thing happening because I started to establish things, and it, was, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. And I love morning affirmations. And every morning, every morning, most mornings I would pick up an, uh, an, uh, uh, a random affirmation and then I, I wound up with her affirmation and I, I heard her words, which she, the way she was talking. And I'm doing my thing in my house, listening to this affirmation, I'm like, whoa, who is this? I love how she talks. She is so accurate. Her words are so accurate. She's so sharp. She's it. What is this? Who is she? Awesome. Thank you so much. One of my best morning affirmations. I will still listen to her every once in a while. To her morning affirmation. And when I discovered the morning affirmation, then I heard a few more of her videos. And one of them, she was speaking of, uh, I think it was about magic. And... She was also speaking of something that I, I speak of, I very much resonate with. And as resonate beings, it's the point of expanding and contracting. 
and also with people that I work with, I always say, where do you 